Welcome back. I'm Connie Sokol, your host, and I am delighted today to share with you my wonderful guest. We have Emily Bell Freeman with us today. We are talking about women and scriptures and faith, and it is going to be delightful and wonderful. And Emily, thanks for taking a minute to be with us today. Oh, thanks for having me with you. Oh, it's so fun. And I was just telling her, I feel like I'm in her living room and we're chatting, but with COVID-19, we are staying socially appropriately distant. So that's beautiful that technology can help us out. So, so nice. Isn't it great? So yeah. today we're going to be talking about, as I mentioned, women and scriptures and faith. And I got to be honest, I'm a speaker as well. And, and I go and talk with women and that's one of the things that seems to intimidate them. Do you find that? that the yes. Scriptures. Do you find that? Yeah, I do. I find that everywhere I go that um, it, women don't mind teaching as much as they mind trying to figure out how to put together a, a lesson with scripture within the lesson. There is something that is intimidating about that. Oh yeah. And I know even for myself and I love scripture and I love teaching scripture, but I've had so much fear about, do I say the right land and do I have the right time frame? And then did I interpret it correctly? Right. Yes. I have all of these fears about it. Never mind as a busy mom and wife, mother, sister, aunt, people are trying to get time to get scriptures in. So we got all of these kind of swirling things about women, especially having guilt about it. Of I know it's a good thing. I know this is going to bless my life. Not exactly sure of the ways of everyday living, which right. about, but how do I make this happen in reality? Right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. So first I want to kind of go back. You have a beautiful scholarly knowledge and understanding of the scriptures and a love of them and a delight in sharing them. So where did this come from? Is it parent induced? Is it, oh, this was me born in my childhood. Where did this come from? This love of the scriptures? For sure. Part of it came from my mom. Um, and for the fact that she really liked to, um, she loved the book of Mormon. So she talked about the book of Mormon all the time. She taught us from the book of Mormon all the time. But my mom is a someone who loves to study. And so if she would find something that intrigued her, like the second coming, or um, I'm trying to think of other, I can remember growing up and her taking me to education week when I was like in my teens to the classes that were like the heavy doctrine classes <laughs> because she was trying to figure things out. And as I sat there, I can remember looking at all those teachers and thinking, I want to know the scriptures like that. Like it was, it, for me, it was watching someone else who knew the scriptures gave me a passion to want to know the scriptures as well. I love that. I love that. And that your mom, it always comes back to the moms, I swear, but the influence, that beautiful influence that they have in what interests them and what they pursue is what they're going to bring their kids along with. And yep. look how you have manifested that in your life. And I should mention that if you don't know who Emily Bell Freeman is, well then get on Google and check her out. But <laughs> she is a mother of five. She is a coach's wife and she is a sought after inspirational speaker, prolific author, lots of books that you can find at Deseret Book. And we're going to talk about those in a little bit also, but I love this, that it started there. Now, how did you nurture that? Because we all have things that our parents love, but some things go by the wayside and some things we're interested in. How did you nurture that? What, what's been kind of the path for you in loving and then sharing scripture? So what happened for me is I started watching people teach scripture that um, connected with me. You know how sometimes that happens where you'll hear somebody talk about scripture and you'll be like, oh, I've never noticed that about that story before. And every time I found someone who could connect me with scripture, I became fascinated with that person. So then I would want to study everything I could find about that person, whether it was a professor um, or Elder Holland does a really good job. Sometimes you notice he'll start telling you a story from the scriptures and then he a little bit brings it to life and he connects you to the people there. And it, for some reason, when people do that, then I'm like, how did he just do that? And it makes me go back to that conference talk or back to the lesson from that professor to study. How did he draw me in? How did he bring me in there? Because I connected with that in a way that I haven't before. And um, it's awesome when it happens in a conference talk because that's so easy to go back and look through. But sometimes um, 
Like for me, I will find someone who I admire, then I want to read everything they've ever written. And I want to listen to every talk they've ever given because I want to watch their patterns of how is it that they are doing such a good job of connecting me into scripture? What are the tools they're using to be able to do that? Oh, I love that. One of my favorites for that is Sherry Dew. I just was rereading her Women in the Priesthood. And as I'm reading this, I just feel drawn in. She adds in stories. She has insights. She's real and candid. I absolutely agree. And you want to just devour. It's nourishing to read that. And when you were talking, I was thinking about that. When someone likens it, especially in a conference talk, and it it made me think immediately of Elder Holland, when he was talking about Peter. Remember when he comes back and then he's, and they're back to fishing after the savior's gone. And they're thinking, well, we'll go a fishing. Right. Yeah. And I will never forget that conference talk when he's like, well, then Peter, what are you doing here? And it, <laughs> this feeling, it just makes you go, Peter's a real person and yep. the savior's a real person and they're having a real conversation and you can put yourself in that place. Oh, I love that, that likening. So Tell me how, as you've talked to women, you've done Time Out for Women, you've done a lot of speaking, how do you, what kind of tips and tools do you teach women or what kinds of little things do you help them with being able to do that, take that experience? What are tools that you share to help them like in the scriptures? Because when I'm speaking to women, you know, I'm sharing, it gives you energy, it gives you clarity, it gives you insight. And they're looking at me like, you know, I believe you but I just don't know how to get that into my own life, right? So what are some things that you share with them? So I think a couple things that are helpful, first of all, is just to get in. Um, I think sometimes we're so intimidated that we don't, we don't even start because we're just afraid it isn't gonna work for us again. And I can remember when I was a young mom, and I've talked about this before, and so you may have heard it, but seriously, it is the number one thing that made a difference in my life. I started leaving my scriptures open every day and wherever I was, I would leave my scriptures open in that place. And my scriptures would move with me around the house. If I was in the kitchen, I'd bring them to the kitchen. If I was in the bedroom, I'd bring them to the bedroom. Folding laundry was one of my favorite places to study. And I don't want you to think I was reading chapters during that time because I had little littles at my house. So I would get through two or three verses a day. That's it. But because my scriptures were open, it was like an invitation to come back. Anytime there was a quiet moment, I was like, oh, I'll just grab one more verse. I'll just get one more done. And so the first thing I think is actually get in your scriptures because the more you read them, um, you're, the more you'll love them. That's what will happen. So, and becoming familiar with the language of the scriptures, um, that's part of the first part. Um, The second thing for me that has really helped um, the way that I read is to study words and phrases rather than verses and chapters, because verses and chapters can be really overwhelming. Words and phrases all of a sudden make things personal for us. Um, And we had the opportunity for the last six months with the Inklings group that I host to really dive in and do that word and phrase study. And I was so surprised how many women told me over the course of that six months, okay, this is changing the way I read my scriptures. This is making such a difference to my ability to understand. And it was awesome because at the beginning of the journey, I picked um, usually six to seven words and about three phrases that I would just go through and pick. And then I told the women, don't learn, don't study all the words and don't study all the phrases. That's going to be overwhelming unless you have a really lot of time. Just pick two words, pick one phrase. And by the end of our study, women were saying, I picked my own words this week. I went through, I did the reading. I picked my own words and my own phrases that have to do with my life right now. And I thought to myself, it's so awesome how sometimes You just need someone to give you the courage and a pattern, and then you can start. Um, And that'd be my third advice is to find a mentor. Find somebody who is doing it well and um, just start studying with that person. And like you're saying, Sherry Dew does it really well. Obviously, we are not going to go to her house and sit in her living room and study with her, but 
we can read her books. We can look back at her old talks. We can, um, you can do a study with Sherry Dew without having to be in Sherry Dew's house. And for me, that has been the most helpful is finding people who I love how they teach and how they study and just researching everything they've done so that I can learn more about their patterns. And maybe there is someone in your neighborhood or in your family or in your community that you could say, can I just come study with you for like a month? Can we pick something and study? Um, I do love the online communities that are doing that, obviously, because I have three. Um, because <laughs> I think it helps so much when you can study with someone. And so um, in my life, I do, I provide the Inklings group, which is more of an independent women's study by topic. And it's just a group of women studying um, together. Um, personal study, but then uh, with conversations, people engaging in conversations. Um, Multiply Goodness is also a different community that I love. Um, we, I really wanted to discover a Bible study place five years ago that I could go and study the Bible with women particularly women of other faiths. And Multiply Goodness has become that. It's less of a personal study. It's more of a study with friends, with other women, um, where women gather together and you have a, a little scripture group. And some people do it in their living room. Some people are walking scripture study groups. Um, some people actually do it over Zoom. So they're happy right now because theirs is still oh, yeah. working so well. Um, I love the idea of that, of finding women and creating a group and studying. And then don't miss this, obviously, is family study. Um, for me, I love having all three of those areas. I love having a personal study program, a study with friends, and a study for my family. I, I like all three. That's just my personality. I like being invested in that much study. And I love that that opens up that opportunity for women who are listening to say, you know what, that's appealing to me. Like I could do that with a small group or I could do that individually and just hear what other women have to say. And even if it's just a little bit, all of that makes a difference. I know with Inklings, I was kind of, I was following it, but I wasn't putting as much like comments and things, but the women's comments were inspiring. And yeah. even, even just starting, like I was not super consistent, but the very first thing of Harkin, that changed my life. Just that first word of DNC 25, I put it on sticky notes around the house and it was like Harkin. That was my word. Like for months, that was my word, like Harkin. And then when it came out with hear him, I was like, oh, that makes sense. He's trying to get a message to me, right? Yes. But I love that, that there's those different ways to do it. And I would love to make a plug for what you're talking about. I think it can be nerve wracking a little bit intimidating again for women to reach out to another woman and say, I'd love to study scripture with you. Mm. And I want to make a plug for what Emily's saying. I, a year ago ish, more than a year, I wanted to do that same thing. And there were women in my ward for those that are not of our faith, women who are in the neighborhood, but in our church congregation. And I, I wanted to study with them, but it was intimidating. There was two former Relief Society presidents, which are leaders in our women's congregation and a political leader in, in our, and I mean, it was a little bit intimidating, but I just texted and said, I want to do this. Do you guys want to do this? And we ended up having about six to eight women. And interestingly, those very women with their different talents, it's been part therapy, part scripture study, mm -hmm. and then using the scripture to get answers to solutions. And because of their talents and abilities and the scripture study we did, we actually were ahead of the curve for preparing for the COVID virus, just because of the different traits that different women had and the interest that they had. So it layered, benefited us, all of us. So I put a huge plug for any kind of scripture study and being your bold self, you know, I talk about that a lot, ladies, be your bold self and start with one or two women and just say, we're going to do it once a month, or we're going to do it for three months. We'll do it a trial run and let's see if we like it. And we can review at the end and see what we think about it. Because I love this idea and I don't want women just to hear this and the seed goes on kind of dusty ground of, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I should really do that. It really is be bold, text someone, plant the seed and do it by Zoom. Right now you can do it with the technology. That's how we're doing it now, where we used to have meet at my house. Now we do it by Zoom, just like you were saying. And it has blessed my life and my family's life. So super big plug that way. I love these things that you are saying. And I love that you're suggesting with the opening of your scriptures 
leaving them about and mm -hmm. the influence that can have on your children of them seeing the familiarity of making it an everyday thing with you and teaching your children. I know I love the scriptures and my kids are like, after five minutes, are we done here? Right. And I've got, there's like 64 references to go. Right. So what's your tips for teaching your children and, and passing on the love that your mother gave you to your children in ways that they can receive them? So I remember from growing up scripture study being long enough that after a few minutes, I was like done. It, it felt constraining instead of like empowering. And so when we started doing scripture study with my husband and with our kids, I said to him, I, I don't want to do that. So our scripture study with our kids has always been really short. Um, if we are all together with the whole family, it is no matter what not longer than 15 minutes. That is um, the rule of scripture study in our home. And usually less time, we do bite-sized pieces every day rather than trying to fit in this huge amount that just overwhelms. And, and overwhelming is hard, especially for some personalities. Um, one thing that I think might've been the smartest thing that we did with our scripture study. And it wasn't because I'm smart. It's just because the spirit at the time was trying to help answer a, a problem we were having with scripture study. And this is an idea that came and it actually is my favorite thing we ever did over all the years of scripture study. It's when my kids were older in high school and I felt really strongly about wanting my kids to be able to turn to the scriptures by themselves and learn how to get their own answers and direction. And um, I just felt like they were getting the age where they could do that, but for some reason they weren't doing that. And so we changed our family scripture study at that point where it was at 945 every night. It was for 15 minutes. We always set an alarm. So people just know we're not accidentally going to go over the allotted time. And what happened is we would all read for the 15 minutes in the same chapter. We always picked the same chapter to start in. And then we set the alarm and then everybody read. And if the chapter was short and we finished early, perfect. You did not have to read the whole 15 minutes, but we just weren't going to read more than 15 minutes was the rule. And once you were done reading, everyone shared one verse that stood out to them. So that was how scripture study went is every person had an equal time teaching. We only, even mom and dad, we just got to share our one verse and why it was so important for us on that day. And everybody did their one verse. And then, um, that was it. And it was so interesting because rarely did anyone have the same verse, which is so interesting, but it taught a really powerful lesson to my kids that the Holy Ghost really could speak to them individually and personally about what was happening in their life. And so that was one good thing. The other thing, um, I will regularly, when my kids come to me with a problem that I see could be, um, a solution could be found in scripture, I always say to my kids, oh, I, there is something that actually might could help you that is in Alma 5. Um, do you want me to show it to you or would you like to read it yourself? And sometimes they're like, no, I'll just read it myself. And sometimes they'll be like, yeah, mom, get out your scriptures and just show me. And I realize that I love scriptures probably more than my kids do. And so I try and temper my enthusiasm so they're not overwhelmed by it. But I love when every so often it will come up and they will talk about, oh, I remember this, or I thought about this. And the spirit will, will um, increase your, whatever it is that you give your offering. Um, yes. And he'll make it what is needed, but sometimes less is more. I think that is true. Oh my goodness. I am feeling so validated. How about you ladies out there? Because I have felt a little thread of guilt that our scripture study at night is so short and we do the same thing. We do the bite-sized pieces and I'm going to, this was literally unplanned. It is not a shameless plug for Emily stuff, but we cut out these little, the don't miss this conversation cards. And we, this is the unexpected Jesus this week, but we cut those out. And I, what I have found for me is the variety. 
we'll do scripture charades or we'll do these, don't miss these cards, right? Because then we put them like this and we say, okay, pick a card, any card, right? And they can pick it and then they, we, we read the scripture and then we go around and say, what's your thoughts on that? I love this. This makes me feel so validated that it really is tailoring it to your family. There are times when I can tell that the kids are like, we have these things called scripture strips that we made and we pull them out of a jar. I can tell a scripture strip is all they're up for. That's it. Yeah. And if, if I'm even, if we're going to try to do anything more than that, they're gone. They are checked out. So it's not even it's just me being a stellar mom and checking it off my list, yes. just helping them. So I love that you have just validated. Yes. Do a little bit and, and don't stress that people are going to really be in tears about how wonderful it is. The things that you shared, <laughs> you know, everyone's had a chance and the spirits had an opportunity to confirm that. Yes, these are truths. I love that. Love that. And I love that you said, um, do you want me to show it to you or would you like to read it yourself? I, I think that point that you make of tempering that enthusiasm and giving them ownership of scriptures. Well, I trust that you can go find it yourself, you know, and whether they're going to look or not, but you trust them and you're leading them to individually have that relationship with the scriptures. I think that is just so key. That's beautiful. So can you tell us how, speaking of the don't miss this, and this was a beautiful segue, how did that come about with you and David Butler? And people I'm sure ask all the time, how are you related? What's that? How did, so how did this get started? So we actually met many, many years ago. He was my son, Josh's seminary teacher. And um, we, I was going to do a temple walk to the Salt Lake City Temple from Draper. And I was trying to talk my kids into doing that. Every so often, I just like to do great big crazy things. I just like to. And um, my kids were all in the kitchen. They were like, yeah, we're not super interested. But Josh was like, my seminary teacher will totally go with you. And then I was like, I am not doing a temple walk with your seminary teacher. That is so awkward. <laughs> and plus, I was imagining this 65-year-old man in a suit. That was like my image. But anyways, he went back to school and told his seminary teacher, who was David Butler, and then people started talking about it and the kids got super excited about it. And by the time we went, there were 85 people who came with us on the walk. And it wasn't like young women's or anything. It just was people who were like, yeah, we want to, we want to experience something like that. Um, and he and I love creating experiences. That's what um, we like to do. And both of our spouses are super accommodating to letting us just be as creative as we want to. So we're also both very creative personalities with not a lot of organizational skills. That is true about <laughs> us. We are idea generators for sure. And um, so don't miss this was not planned. It wasn't, um, we didn't think this would be a really great thing to do when we heard Come Follow Me announce. Um, we actually had a lot of people say to us, I don't know what to do. Like they just felt paralyzed by the fact that they didn't know what to do. And um, we are also love to be problem solvers because we're idea generators. And so we were like, how could we help? How could we help? And um, the, we, we both teach Institute and I teach a group of women that were like, could you just put up little like bite size, just give us hints, just like, tell us ideas we could think of. And as we were talking about it, we were like, we do not want to take over the come follow me program. We don't want to take over the um, guide that has been put together by inspiration. Um, so we would rather supplement than try and do what the spirit would be telling you to do for your family. And so we honestly thought we were just going to do it for six weeks for my little Institute class and kind of give them tips because we thought once they get into it, people will, will feel braver about it. And we couldn't figure out how to get it to all my ladies. And so I was like, do you think you could just figure out YouTube? Because that seems like the easiest um, place. And this is so funny, but in my mind, I was like, I don't want to put it on Instagram because I don't, I mean, I don't think it's going to be that amazing. So I don't want it to be forever on my Instagram, but if it was on YouTube, then you only would go there if you wanted to, and it, people wouldn't notice it. And it, it kind of felt like this out of the way place to house something like that. And it was so funny because in our minds, what we created and what don't miss this actually was, were not the same thing. The same. 
You could feel the hand of the Lord being like, let me just, I'll give you this little idea and you keep it simple. And you pretend that it's for 150 women. And, and we just put our whole heart into it for those 150 ladies. Cause we love them. And by six weeks in, I can remember I called David one day and I was like, cause he was like, I can probably do this for six weeks. That's what he told me. And I was like, I think that would be plenty. <laughs> and at six weeks in, I was like, uh, I don't think we're getting out of this. Like, I think this might have become permanent, um, which was just not anticipated, but it's been a oh. lot of fun. We actually love doing it. Um, it's very spontaneous. You can probably tell when you watch the videos. Um, love them. We just get together and talk about what we love in those chapters. That is what Don't Miss This is. And I am hoping, I feel like when we hear feedback from people, um, that's what they love is that it is spontaneous. That It's just that we love scriptures and maybe people are loving scriptures too because of it. That's our hope. Oh, absolutely. And I think that spontaneity, that homespunness is just beautiful. I remember seeing one where you were like, Kate, we have to have the stack to hold the laptop because I don't have a battery. And I'm laughing because my Zoom is held up by three board games to get the right height. Yes. You know, I just, I love that you're open about that. And you're like, hey, let's all just gather together in one. Let's just come together with the love of the scriptures and come as you are. And I love that you always say, Jesus meets you where, where you are. Just come as you are and just yeah. be where you're at with the scriptures. And then we'll all learn together. And I think that's just so appealing. It's not a, someone's teaching from Mount Sinai and right. we don't know what we're talking about. It's all sharing and it's putting all your, your, your thing in the stew and making it all that scripture stew. I just love it. That's so fun. I didn't know that that was the origin of that. And now there's what, 50,000 subscribers or 50,000 viewers or whatever that you have on. Don't miss yeah. this. I don't it's even, crazy. I don't even, Greg watches the numbers. Um, I am not, neither of us are number people. We just aren't. I have no I don't idea. want to know even. <laughs> um, I think we hit 7 million views last week, which is crazy. Um, like total views, not just on one video. That but, is fantastic. And look at the good though. Yeah. Look at the good and that dominoes out. And again, this, if you can't tell that this is kind of a running thread through this of leading back to a love of the scriptures because we do what we love. And if we can get start with the, I, my kids and I would talk about the Costco sample. If we can give them a Costco sample and give them a taste of the scriptures, maybe they'll want to feast. And that's the same thing for myself. I love this and the power of scriptures. I want to talk to you for a second about um, memorable moments. Maybe you've had with the events that you've done with the inklings, with the don't miss this. Are there favorite moments that you can go back to where you connected with women or people who were getting that light bulb and those moments for themselves or their families that you just remember, you're like, oh, that was a keeper moment. That was something special. Anything that comes to mind? You know what? There are so many that, and that for me, it's the combination of all of them that have been amazing, but it really is. Um, I will regularly have women come up to me on the street or in grocery stores or places um, and one maybe that is, has been a standout for me this year of this is why you're doing this was I was at Trader Joe's in Orem. I never go to Trader Joe's cause it's kind of far away from my house. But, um, so it was like my second time ever going in there. And I don't know if you've ever been in Trader Joe's, but there are beautiful flowers right when you walk in the door, like they're so pretty and I love flowers. That is like a weakness of mine. So I had just, I walked in and then I got caught up in the flowers and I totally was like in the flowers. I was looking through them and this lady grabbed my arm and um, they a little bit like shook me for a second because I was so into the flowers and she was standing there, the grabbed my arm and I turned and looked at her and she was a younger mom and she had two kids in her shopping cart and I looked at her and she just started crying. She couldn't even have words. And, um, so I just took my hands and put them on hers because we weren't in COVID-19. So you could still love people. And, um, I just held her hands and she just, she just whispered to me nine months ago, I was leaving the church. And, um, then I found your videos and I'm back. And that's all she said. And then she just walked away. That was like, I don't know her name. I don't know anything else about her story. 
Um, but every time we turn on that video downstairs, that is the thought that comes to me is if we can just change the heart of one person and help them see Jesus or the culture of the church or, um, or any of those, our community, um, if they can feel that in a different way, then it is worth it. We are very much about what Elder Uchtdorf taught at conference this past session when he talked about come and belong. And I thought to myself, oh, if, if David Butler and I could teach any message in the entire world, that would be the message. That is who Jesus is. He saved you a seat at the table. He looks around to see who's missing. And sometimes we forget that that's the essence of what we believe. I love that. And that is the driver that we can know this date in this place all day long. But if the scriptures don't change us and help us come closer to him and to feel his love, be able to open, crack open our hearts and our barriers and be able to receive that love, then we're missing it. We're missing we're missing the meal. We're, we're skimming and, and we're not tasting. Yeah. I love that. And I think, I, I know you've experienced that over and over. I know I feel that. I know lots of people do. And that's a great reminder of just looking for that, being opening yourself to that. Like you're saying, keep your scriptures open all day. Keep your heart open all day to, for that moment, that connection, that that drop in that bucket of, I love you. And this is how I'm showing you, especially through scriptures where that is so his medium of speaking to us. Oh, I love this. Tell us about what's from here. I know we just have the restoration proclamation that came out. Going to be doing an inklings on that maybe. Yeah, we can't resist doing an inklings on that. And so um, as I was thinking about it, we had such an amazing experience with inklings over the past six months um, because it became less about an event that you show up at for a certain number of hours and you get uplift and encouragement and then you go home. Um, and that's generally what we experience in a community of women, whether it's our, um, a Relief Society midweek, you know, or we go to an event somewhere. We all come together. We love that strength that we have. And we get uplifted and encouraged and then we go home. And one thing that was really unique about Inglings is it became a place where it wasn't just about being entertained and uplifted and encouraged. It became a place where women engaged. Um, they grew. We experienced growth together. We were having these conversations. I don't know if you looked at any of those Instagram posts, but oh. they averaged like 367 comments because the women are talking to each other. Yes. And one of the things that I love most about Inklings that is unique to Inklings is the commitment is really small. And the thing that we're studying every week is really small. It's, it's just little bite-sized pieces. Um, as I was coming up with it, I was like, I just want this to be a hint of what you're doing. I don't want it to overwhelm you. Um, if you miss a week, then I don't want you to feel like you can't come back and jump back in. But what happened for me is um, last general conference, so six months ago, for three weeks before the spirit had been prompting me, you, you could be better at teaching women how to read scripture. And I kept thinking to myself, yeah, I really could be better, but I don't, I don't know the arena for where I would do that. And the spirit said, you could do it on Instagram. And I was like, well, I could, but I, I just, I'm not sure how that would work. Plus I don't want to overwhelm people. And, um, so then it, I kind of had this impression it could just be one day. Um, it could just be a one bite-sized piece that women could study for five minutes. And I was like, okay, I feel really comfortable about that. I could do a five minute once a week study because that doesn't feel overwhelming to me. And yeah. I don't think it would feel overwhelming to other people. But then I said this back to the spirit, but who is Emily Freeman to tell women what to study? I just don't feel comfortable doing that. And I feel like we have so much on our plate already that I don't want to be like, everybody, let's read whatever. <laughs> so I was like, I'll think about it. This is why I told the spirit. I'll think about it. But I just need to figure out like where it fits with everything else that we've been asked to do. So when President Nelson in the last general conference said, 
you need to study DNC 25 and 84 and 107. Immediately in my mind, my first thought was, I'm going to do that. Like, I seriously, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put together a study and I am going to do that. And the spirit said right after, you should invite other people to do it with you. And that's how Inklings was born is I thought I'm going to put together my own study, what I would do. And anyone who wants to come and do it with me. And, um, it really was bite size. It was so small that you could, um, jump in at any point. You could go backwards if you wanted to, you could go forwards. Um, so a lot of women asked me, are you going to do something again? And it was so interesting before our conference, because I was like, I love the community. I love the women who have gathered. Um, there is such a, a voice of strong women. That, and it's interesting because not all of them felt like they were strong at the beginning, but they gained that courage through mm -hmm. the experience. And so I just thought to myself, well, if President Nelson invites us to study something else, I will consider it. And if he doesn't, I will figure that was a, yeah. an amazing six month experience. It was great and goodbye. And, and then as soon as he gave us the proclamation and my favorite thing he said that I'm just waiting for Thursday, the um, conference things to come out. Um, because when, do you remember when he said, study it? And then yes. he said, by yourself, with your family. And then he said, with friends. And I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly what we're going to do. And so last night I sat down and I broke um, the whole proclamation into as many weeks as it will be between now and general conference, which is so nice because it makes it so bite-sized. Again, it's really easy to engage. Um, but I've also been talking with um, a group of women who did the Inklings experience that um, they were like, we want to help and we want to be a part. And so we have a whole bunch of surprises in store for that Inklings community um, that we'll be talking about and kind of rolling out over the next two weeks. But we actually moved that um, account off of Emily Bell Freeman and put it on to Inklings, a hint of something more over on Instagram so that it's going to be able to house everything that we're going to do there. Um, but That's it's going to so be so good for women. And it's a place where you're going to be able to have really good personal growth with friends, which is what I'm super excited about. I love that. And I think that point that you're making, especially for women, we are wired for connection. So when we can dig those roots deep with scripture, we can connect through scripture. I saw those comments of women and those insights were incredible, oh, incredible. Good. And these women I know were not thinking, wow, I'm a scriptorian. I had that insight, but they were gorgeous insights. And I think that's something that is, is the blooming experience of when we as women connect through scripture, what there's something deeper and our, our feelings and our love for each other and our solutions we find for daily life and our families it all has that depth to it, that, that other, those many facets that have, that's what spirituality does for us. And that all just comes together. I love this. If women want more information on this, where can they find it? So the easiest place is going to be that Inklings Instagram. So if they just type in Inklings period, and then it will say a hint of something more, and that's how you know you're in the right place. Um, or they can go to Emily Bell Freeman because I'm going to be pushing us all over to that place for the next couple of weeks. So if that's easier to remember, cause that's kind of a long tag. Sure. Um, so if Emily Bell Freeman is easier, come over there and we're, we're going to get everybody where they need to be. Um, and then up and running, we'll send out. So with Inklings, we like it to be a community where you can just participate for free. And so a study journal will go out this Thursday that people can just download for free at their house. And then we will jump into the study a week from Thursday. So I don't know when you'll post this, perfect. but it should give people a little bit of time to. to oh, do that's it. perfect. We are posting it this week because we wanted to, as we're wrapping this last bit up, what are some thoughts you have? I've already shared about the cards as far as for Easter. We have Easter Sunday coming. Beautiful time to be sharing about the Savior 
with our families. And I know that's what we're doing. I know Latter-day Saint Church, they are putting out the, the cards every day. It's hear him and there, those tiles, those memes that are showing different days of, of the Savior in his last week of his life. And it's beautiful. It's giving us great springboard, springboard for us for discussion and chats. Anything else that you would encourage for the women? I know you do an Easter crush, and if I say that right. Yes. Uh, and I know that you do that. Is there anything else for families and for women to prepare for Easter? Just the last simple tip to share with them. So I would say um, we, there are a lot of resources we have out right now over at Don't Miss This Study. We're doing the Unexpected Jesus, which is what I am loving this year. Um, but we're also with LDS Living doing the videos every day of looking at Easter, not by event, but through the eyes of um, other people who were there on that first Easter and what they learned, what was their experience, what were their um, testimonies and what is a tradition that would help us to remember that experience. So we have both of those going, but um, I also last year had a really unique experience. I was reading in a book that I love that is an old, old book. I love really old books. I am a collector of old books. And um, one set of books I have is, um, were written by a man named Alfred Adersheim, and it's the life and teachings of Jesus, the Messiah. And I was reading about Palm Sunday, and um, the books are old, and they were owned by a Catholic priest, the ones that I have. He has his name and his picture in the front of the book. And so I love as I go through and read, because he's marked things that I'm like, oh, I love reading what... Um, this man probably read before he prepared his sermons. And there's just a connection there with him that is so funny because he's long dead by now because this he owned the books in 1913. So um, I got to the one that talked about the triumphal entry. I was reading about that and it was so cute because he put a star by it and then he signed his name under it. And then he just wrote this phrase, today is Palm Sunday. And he put the date. And I thought to myself, I love the thought of that man sitting somewhere in his home on Palm Sunday and just reading about that experience, about um, what he could learn about Palm Sunday. And I thought, I want to be intentional like that about Easter. What am I going to read the night before Easter? Um, what do I want to learn and experience? And what are the thoughts I want to be having? Um, those are just some of the thoughts that I had um, this time, especially because some people have kids at home. We don't. Um, it's just Greg and I, and normally we would be inviting family over and kids over and an Easter egg hunt. And, and we just don't live that world right now and so what is the connect this year for those who don't have kids at home um and finding that um celebration and the anticipation of easter and maybe it will be more sacred maybe it will be more quiet maybe we'll that just prepares our heart also i think the mass is going to do that for many of the us. The Global Fast on Friday worldwide for several specific things regarding the COVID-19. And I think what a beautiful time. It's, it's perfect timing to all come together and have that focus. And I love what you said about making Easter, if I'm hearing this correct, just more personal this year. And I felt that with my own kids. And each day, like on Sunday, it was Palm Sunday and we got to participate as the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in a Hosanna shout with the handkerchiefs and that whole feeling of the palm fronds and, and saying Hosanna. I mean, it was incredible. And then today is Teaching Tuesday is what I call it, but yeah. where the Savior's teaching and we talked yesterday about the money changers and what do we need to let go of or get out of our lives that is not helping us to feel that holiness, that that goodness, that what, what's the obstacle that's keeping us from feeling him and really keeping that environment in our home. And it's, so I love that applying these things personally. And I agree. I think this year more so than any other year, a lot of the noise and lovely traditions, not, not that they're bad or anything, but just a lot of this noise has been taken and it's a very quiet, calm, reflective Easter. And I think that's a beautiful 
may never ever happen again this way, you know, to have this kind of experience. So I agree taking those moments and taking that time to read and write and connect and feel. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful experience for us this year. Oh, I'm so happy to have you on today. This is perfect timing. I'm so thrilled. And again, if you want to connect with Emily Bell Freeman, her books are at Deseret Book on Amazon. And you can also check out Inklings and into something more on Instagram. Check out their videos on YouTube. Don't miss this with her and David Butler. Again, so grateful to have you here today. Happy Easter. And I so appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Emily. Thank you for having me. Take care. And as always, you can get more of this if you want more podcasts, want more information, want more of those free downloads and wonderful challenges that we have, go to ConnieSokol.com where we can help you take care of those and you can connect and gather in our community also. Take care and thanks and join us for our next one.